Welcome back everyone. So this is continuing on with the Hypercube Evolution printer that I'm building. However, I just wanted to separate this a little bit because in looking around the web and uh, just general, and YouTube and just generally searching for information on setting up Marlin 2, there's quite a lot around, but not all of it's that much use and some of it's confusing so I separated this out just so that if anyone's searching for setting up Marlin 2 uh, it might be helpful. So in this video I'm really just concentrating on getting the basics set up so getting the dual z-axis sorted out with the drivers that I'm using and I'll come back and concentrate on the specifics down the track. Okay, so let's take a look at the video now. Okay, so we want Visual Studio Code. zip off to that site and we want to get stable build for Mac just let that download unzip that Okay, so on the Mac this just creates an executable, so I'd like to uh, just drag that into applications. And now you'll see it in the uh, launch pad and obviously also it's in applications here so let's get it started okay just given the old warning yes I do want to open it see it's open here in the dock I'm going to use it a bit so I like to uh, just mark it to keep in dock and here we are Visual Studio Code Okay, so now we need to install uh, platform.io. So basically just look for tools and languages and search on platform.io. It's the platform.io IDE we need. So just click on install. This took a little while when I did it on the Windows box. Please do not close this window or and do not open other folders until this process is complete. I know when I've been told, just let it go and let it install. Okay, well there you go, platform IO has been successfully installed, please reload window. So there we go, reload. It would appear we are good to go. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is to go to Marlin. download and what we want to do is get the Marlin 2.0 bug fix
I'll just unzip that. There we go. I actually like to keep a copy of the version that hasn't been modified yet, just for reference. Okay, so I would recommend putting this somewhere sensible rather than leaving it on the desktop. And if we have a look, as you can see under original, I've got that zip file and I've got the unzipped version in this bug fix location here. Okay, so next what we want to do is open the project. We want to navigate to that particular location. Active. Open. Okay, so here we have our Marlin project open and ready to go. Okay, so the other thing that's going to make life a little bit easier in testing this out is if we download and install an application called uh, Prontoface. So if you just do a search on it, you'll see um, a top hit will be this print run. Let's go to it, uh, the Prontoface uh, print run. We want to download and we want uh, Windows and OS X binaries. And in my case, I'll pick the latest Mac version. unpack that so uh, as I normally do I things that I'm going to run often I normally like to just whack them in applications so let's just drop that in there okay we'll just open open let's close that and here we go. Prontoface is a really handy little utility that allows us to be able to manually query the board and things like that and send uh, G-code commands to uh, move the steppers and test things out uh, nice and quickly. Okay, so here we are with Marlin installed. Let's get this set up for the Big Tree Tech uh, SKR. 1.3. I'm using TMC2130 SPI uh, stepper drivers so it'll be specific to that. Where there are any differences uh, to other drivers I'll just point it out at that point in time. Okay so the first thing we need to do is open uh, the Marlin folder and start with configuration.h. So we just scroll down through here and make sure that define serial port is zero. Scroll down a little bit further and we want to uncomment uh, the define for serial port underscore two and we just want to make sure that is minus one. Go down to the board rate. We are going to be using 115200. So just select that and paste that on the board right next thing we look at is the motherboard we are obviously not using a ramps 1.4 so the way to find your board is either just type what I tell you to type in or if you have a look under the source folder in boards and um, do a search on uh, big tree or SKR you'll find that the board is documented here and if we just copy that we can close boards.h and go back 
to our configuration and just select that ramps board setting and paste in uh, board underscore big tree underscore skr underscore v1 underscore three that is all we need to do there okay so extrude is obviously is one I can see an issue here that I'll fix right now with the filament diameter I'll be using 1.75 so just scrolling down through all of these guff tool heads blah 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 thermal settings so setting up the thermocouples I'm just going to whack uh, one in here for the moment which is a hundred K thermistor and if you notice it's already set up for the sensor zero I have a bed sensor as well and as I say for the moment I'm just going to put that in there okay this is important this is a core XY printer so we want to select the machine to be core XY and we do that by uncommenting that define okay stepper drivers obviously we do need to change this I'm using TMC 2130 SPI drivers so just copy that I'll be using one on the X driver so I'll uncomment the X driver type and type that in I'll be using Y so we need that obviously Z Oops, so paste that in. Now, I have two Z drivers, and in the case of the TMC 2130s, we uncomment the Z2 driver and change that as well. Now, also, we'll be having one extruder, so I'm just going to uncomment that. I don't actually have a extra TMC 2130 driver for the extruder so I'm not too sure what I'm going to do about that whether I'll order another one or whether I'll just use a DRV8825 that I have sitting around but I'm just going to leave that as is at this point in time. Now here is a difference using the 2130 the TMC 2130 and I believe some of the other TMC uh, devices certainly the UART uh, controlled ones you actually specify the second Z driver as Z2. If you're using something like a 4988 or I believe also DRV8825, I believe you just uncomment the E2 and set it up accordingly uh, with the jumpers and things like that. And I believe it will just use, sorry, not E2, the E1. I believe if you do that, it will just use the first unused E1 driver. So in this case, you would uncomment that and change and you know, put in whatever driver type you have. But as I say, in my case, I'm using the smarter software sort of controlled devices, SPI, and you just specify it as Z2. Okay, so that's all pretty well right to go at this point in time. What else do we need to change? If we look at the uh, default access steps per unit, I probably will need to change these. I'm not gonna worry about it at the moment because we're just testing whether it works or not. However, depending on the micro steps that you select and everything like that, which can on these drivers can be anywhere between 16 and 256, I believe these settings need to be changed. As I say, leaving it as is for the moment, but we'll probably need to come back and have a look at this. Okay, I think that's all we need in the configuration.h. The next thing we wanna do is go to the configuration underscore ADV, so advanced configuration. This is quicker to actually just use find because there is a mountain of stuff in here. So the first thing we want to look for is Z underscore jewel. And here we are. What we need to do is uncomment this defined statement for Z dual stepper drivers. And that will set it to use the uh, dual Z drivers. Okay, so the next thing we want to look for
So this is where the stepper drivers are. You can see here we can set the micro steps as well from uh, 16 up to 256. Also just going to leave that here now. We're just trying to get this going to make sure they actually work. So that's good enough for the moment. Also that peak current, that's going to be dependent on the actual um, stepper motors you're actually using. So we can set what current the drives will want to operate at. Next thing we want to look for is TMC underscore use. Okay, here we need to uncomment TMC use software SPI. And next we want to look at uh, TMC underscore debug. Okay, here we've got uh, monitor driver status. We want to uncomment that so that we can actually use these M codes to extract information about the actual drivers. And if we just keep going down there, we will actually also get to another define, which is TMC debug, which we need in there to be able to extract that information as well. So I think that's all we need just to uh, test out the actual uh, drivers and motors and just make sure everything moves okay. There is one other thing we need to do though. If we go to platformio.ini, you will see that the default environment is currently set to a mega 18 mega 2560. We are obviously not using that. Okay, and if we just scroll down through here, we will find Da, 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 da. We are using an ARM Cortex M3, so our environment is LCP 1768. So if we copy that, come back up to the top here and copy that in, all should be well in the world. So that's all we really need to compile this now to do our first test. So if we scroll down here, there's a little tick here which uh, if your mouse over says platform IO build, so we just click on that. This can take quite a bit of time, so it's pretty much just a matter of let it go and wait until it's finished doing its thing. Ah, okay, success. That looks promising. And if we look at our platform, we actually have a build. So three minutes, 43 seconds. Yours might be a bit quicker than my poor old thing. If you've got the luxury of a Windows device, you can get it to upload the firmware straight to the board or sort of straight to the board. We'll go through how to do this. For me, on the Mac, I don't have any such luxury. If we go back up to the top here, here we go. If you set it up, you can upload straight on. The board looks like a drive when you plug it in, which we'll see. If not, then you copy the firmware from this location, .pio slash build lpc1768 slash firmware dot bin on manually do that. So that's what I need to do. So if we have a look in here, inside the Marlin folder in Mac, a dot means it's a hidden folder. So if I go command shift dot, it'll actually show any hidden files and folders. So if I double click on the dot PIO build 1768, there is our new firmware file. If I plug the board in, what I will see, open another window here, is there's a new drive mounted here and in that drive there is a firmware.cur. That firmware is the current firmware that's in use by the board and to update it all we need to do is to copy that firmware.bin file across onto that drive and basically pull out the USB cable plug it back in again once it appears again if we have a look you'll notice that there is now just the firmware.cur 
and its date timestamp is exactly that one that I just put on there that we just built. So it's now running on that particular firmware that we just built. So I guess the next thing that we should do is actually test this out. What I've got here set up as a test bed is I've got the board with all the drivers installed. I've got the display connected up to it. I've got a couple of stepper drivers here and at the moment they're plugged into the X and Y. And I've also got power, 24 volt power from the power supply onto the board. Now, up until now, I've actually had this jumper here, this jumper set on the rightmost side. And what that does is actually power the board from the USB. So if I plug it in, you'll see instantly that the board comes up, power light on, and the display and everything, and all is sweet. Now, that's good and well for um, flashing the firmware on the drive and things like that, but it's not gonna actually run the stepper motors. What we need to do is move that jumper to the left side, and what that does, it sets the board to use the power supply from, the, to use the external power supply. So if we now turn that on, it actually powers up fine. And if I now connect the USB, the USB, the computer will be connected to it and we can use pronto phase for um, driving these steppers. So that all looks good. So what we'll do here on pronto phase is uh, hit the connect. And you'll see over here it says the uh, printer is now online and if we use M122 we get a heap of information about the drivers and uh, right at the bottom here uh, we get uh, messages uh, X connection, Y connection, Z connection, Z2 all okay. So what we should be able to do now is if we go over to the controls here, we can actually move the X and the Y and the Z um, manually using this. So let's just um, try moving the X and you'll see that it actually moved. And if I just hit the uh, 100, it will move it further. And as you can see, because it's Core XY, it actually operates both of them. And if I hit here, it should go back the other way. Sweet. And with Y, again, let's give that a try. Good O. And let's see if we can run it back. Okay, so that all looks okay. So look, what I'll do, I'll just disconnect and power down the power supply, swap those motors over onto the Z and we'll give that a try. Okay, so we'll connect that and just try and raise it. That looks good, and lower. Okay, so I think we can call that a success for the uh, drivers. They all appear to be good to go. I think the next thing is to uh, look at putting this on the actual printer and seeing what happens on the printer itself which I will cover off in the next video. Okay, cheers for now. If you like what I'm doing, then please do like the video. If you'd like to see more, then please subscribe and don't forget to hit the chime so you get notified when I post something new. And I'll put a couple of links here to some other videos you can look at.